Hey everyone, welcome back to Skywatch Weekly. My name is Nick. Hope you had a great week and hopefully had a chance to get outside and do some stargazing. I had a chance a couple nights to get out there and see what could be seen. Now I especially hope you had a chance to at least attempt and maybe complete our weekly challenge from last week. It was to see Venus in the daytime sky just with your eyes. And I was able to pull it off actually on Sunday. Got a view here. This is an image taken by my smartphone. No telescope, no binoculars here. You got the moon at the bottom and Venus up towards the top of the frame. A tiny dot here. It was honestly a lot more obvious in the real sky just with the naked eye. So I definitely encourage you, if you haven't seen this yet, try and do it over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be easier then than when Venus is starting to get close to where the sun is in the sky. Uh, then it's going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit harder on the eyes to... Uh, see Venus through that glare. Well, speaking of Venus, for tonight, let's get started looking west. Once again, we're going to try and re-familiarize ourselves with what we see over in this direction. So we've got Venus. It is the brightest point of light in the sky right now. Uh, definitely give it a look. Uh, you're going to also find stars like Procyon there in Canis Minor. Uh, someone had also been asking about this star over here called Capella. That's part of the constellation of Origa the charioteer. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about Capella coming up next week, uh, but it is here and uh, definitely eye-catching, a little bit further north in the sky, a little bit higher up as well than Venus. Well, I mentioned that Venus is the brightest point of light in the sky right now, but it is not the brightest thing in the sky. That's going to be the moon. The moon's making a great appearance right now, sort of this two-week span starting from the new moon last week to a full moon coming up late next week. We get a great chance to see the moon in the evening sky. And, uh, well, for tonight, it's going to be right near two stars that we talked about last week, Pollux and Castor in Gemini. Those are the heads of those Gemini twins. They're stick figure bodies extending down below. And the moon, it's looking great. Absolutely brilliant. It's uh, almost a first quarter moon. First quarter coming up tomorrow night on the 30th. But for tonight on the 29th, you have nearly a half-lit moon. And it is just wonderful, a great view, and I definitely encourage you to, uh, to take a look. Just with your eyes, it's beautiful enough. If you have binoculars or a small telescope, or perhaps a large telescope, give it a look. You might be amazed at what you can see. About a month ago, I was out with my telescope and uh, was able to get this view. Uh, this is just past a first quarter moon, but just about the same view as you're going to see tonight. Now, notice all that cratering, all the shadows and things that you see, especially along that shadow line. We call that the Terminator. Now, the things that are going to be changing over the next week or so are not only the phase of the moon, how much of it is illuminated. You're going to see more and more of it illuminated each night, but also where the moon is in the sky. So for tonight, we've got the moon right there by Pollux and Castor. Easy to find the moon and the Gemini twins right nearby. But that's not always the case. If you go out tomorrow night, when it's a first quarter moon, it's going to be quite a bit further away from Gemini. And the night after that, that could be right near a star we talked about last week as well, Regulus. That's in the constellation of Leo the Lion, right at the bottom of that backwards question mark or that sickle. That's going to be our weekly challenge for the week, keeping an eye on the moon's phase and also its location in the sky, the bright stars that it might be nearby tonight on the 29th near Pollux and Castor and coming up on Friday night near Regulus. Next Tuesday on the 5th, it's going to be a near bright star called Spica. And that's going to be our next target as we turn our attention to the east. So now we're facing in the opposite direction of where we started. We saw Venus and the moon towards the west. Now we're looking east. And here we see kind of a, a classic springtime star. Arcturus. It's got an orangish glow to it. It's going to be about halfway up in the sky, a couple hours past sunset over the next couple of weeks. An easy way to know that you're looking at Arcturus is to use one of the best known patterns in the sky. It's going to be one you've probably seen before or at least heard of, the Big Dipper. Now the Big Dipper is almost at the top of the sky right now. In fact, it's opposite across the top of the sky from Leo the constellation we had looked at at the top of the sky last week. So if we're looking here, the zenith is what's directly overhead. A couple hours past sunset tonight. Notice we got Leo on one side and the Big Dipper on the other. 
We're going to be concentrating on the handle of the Big Dipper. We'll talk a little, little bit more about its part of the sky in the north next week. But for now, let's concentrate on that handle, that arc shape that it makes, and see what we can find using that. So following that arc of the handle of the Big Dipper, you can see it kind of points towards Arcturus in the sky. And in fact, there's a little saying that goes, you arc to Arcturus. Now that's only the first part of the saying. The rest of it goes on to another part of the sky, uh, down towards the southeast right now, and that's the bright star Spica. So you can arc to Arcturus and speed down to Spica. So Spica is part of the constellation of Virgo, the maiden, another one of our zodiac signs. So here we have Spica in that constellation of Virgo, the maiden. Arcturus, by the way, is part of the constellation of Boötes, the herdsman. Not a particularly well-known constellation, but the bright star Arcturus, uh, definitely eye-catching. So I'm going to zoom our view out a little bit here. It's a little bit tricky using planetarium software meant to show a dome view in a domed theater overhead. We're translating it here to a flat screen view. So we can zoom out a little bit. Things are going to get distorted around the edges just a bit here. I want to give you sort of a clear view of the, uh, well, kind of the overall effect of what we're looking at in the sky here. So we've got Leo there. Also, we have the Big Dipper. And we can use that arc to Arcturus. And then past that, we speed down to Spica. So it's continuing that arc shape, sort of all one big circle in the sky, including that handle of the Big Dipper, Arcturus, and then Spica. Spica, once again, down towards the southeast. It's about a third of the way up in the sky, a couple hours past sunset tonight. Now, Spica is also going to be where you're going to look for the moon. That's coming up next Tuesday on May 5th. You're going to get the moon right near Spica at that point. So will give you a view of what that'll look like here. There's the nearly full moon right near that star Spica. And uh, sort of on that line in between Arcturus and Spica as well. So that's what we've got for you this week. Definitely don't forget to subscribe. And also let us know what you think. Other things that you might want to spot in the sky. Ideas for a weekly challenge perhaps. Definitely follow the Adler Planetarium on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much for watching.